Well, most people know me, but they sort of think I'm a marvelous asshole because I speak out loud and I do my programs. But everybody thinks that I'm sort of unwell or mental, but that's not really true. I'm just a man on a path. And my path has changed through many business opportunities and many ways of self-employment and a few times working for people. But what I mostly found in those environments is a lot of corporate abuse. And I just wasn't interested in being a part of that musing. You see, when I was a manager level, I still had people who reported to me and I still had to train them to replace me. And that's one of the things that I really did when I worked in manufacturing was that I knew that I was leaving. I knew I'd be leaving in a few months time because I'd already started job hunting. And openly I didn't have to tell people because people are horrible like that. But the reality is what I chose to do was to train three people to replace me. And for the most part, they could replace the basics of what I was doing, but not the mentality in which I was doing it. I also made some mistakes that early in my career of not thinking how costly it was to keep repeating things to be perfect, but that's over me and not on them. I learned the hard way with that. But what I can tell you is about people who are harmed like me, that when they're harmed, they're harmed, and they never quite recover from that. When they're in love, they're in love, and they never quite stop loving with that. What I can tell about people who are outside of me, who think they know me, is that you rarely know me. That I'm a man that is very complex, very intelligent, is somewhat true. But I'm only intelligent about the things I know about. I'm not intelligent about the things you know about. It's one of the reasons that my marketing program, The Spirit of Your Company, works so well. Because while you're talking to me, while I'm sort of investigating in you, and sort of interrogating you, and sort of questioning you, I'm learning more about you, and I'm learning things about me. I'm learning what I like about me, I'm learning what I hate about me, I'm learning what is good about me, but at the same time I'm learning about you, and how you talk to me, how you relate to me, how you impact me, how you say things to me, how you arrogantly interact with me sometimes, I learn about you. But what my job is, is not to just learn about you, my job is not to, mm, let's see, profile you, but my job is to help you take the language that you not naturally speak and don't think about using to talk and promote your business with. And that's how we get the marvelous taglines and mantras that we do. Because I'm a keen listener. I have both divergent and dialogic thinking processes. Dialogic is something that's very linear and it allows me to really think in patterns and think of processes that get from one part of a process to the end of the outcomes we're looking for. Divergent thinking allows me to consider things from a different angles and different perspectives and different data and different emotions and different psyches and different spiritualities and that's not the perfect example of that but if you want to learn more about Kantian theory and other types of things by all means read Harold Kushner's books and works but there's all kinds of books in my past history that have produced a life for me and my life is my life just like your life is your life and if you don't like working with me then don't keep renewing the business with me but I did have one ma ma remarkable old-time pastor who lost his job after some 13, 15, I don't know, 18 years of being a pastor, and he was sort of lost, but he was also horrendously overweight. And there's something we know about churches today, they're looking for a look that makes them great, which often means that sometimes they keep employees who are horrible for the church and literally ruin relationships. And I once was working in a telecom version of a marvelous church in my community, but I got tired of dealing with the prima donna gay drama teacher who was really over the whole department. So I just walked off. The one agreement that I had with an elderly gentleman whose name I can't even remember at this time was we all felt that God's business should be professional. Now I'm not doing that because there is a professional God out there. But most people in the world are very rarely professional anymore. We have totally lost our understanding of propriety in terms of human relationships. We have totally gone overboard in the terms of voyeurism and interacting in other people's relationships. And gossip totally destroys people. So when I'm in love with someone, I'm not going to tell people in my family until it's done. Until I've earned the right of that hand in marriage or I've earned that right to the bed in love. And I'm not going to do that. So if someone has the name of the person that I love, then they stole it from some sort of piece of property or lawful document in which I've pledged my allegiance, not to the flag, but to the right to bequeath my property to the person that I love. And even on the document to my storage that I signed in an agreement and knew I was going to be paying eventually or paying back was my name alone. 
and the people that removed things from my storage unit didn't, never contacted me. The sheriff's office never told me they were selling things for me, and at no time was I given the opportunity to save anything. But allegedly, my mother had to go in and repay for my property to the local sheriff, and I just don't buy that. I don't really buy it on either end. I think it allows them to go in and edit things that are mine and none of the rights to touch or even know about. And don't forget, at the same time, it allowed sheriff, the local sheriff, to steal things from my Japan trips. Things that are one of a kind. And most of my property, frankly, is one of a kind. It has a much higher value than you could possibly imagine in the streets. And my guess is that sheriff do not ha know how to value or evaluate a man's property from overseas. What was happening constantly in my home in an apartment complex whose name that I can't even remember was my property was constantly going missing. My Japanese wares, my Japanese Furoshi, which are a big sort of uh, beautifully designed and created thing of a bunch of samurai, are all gone. My handkerchiefs are gone. Who the fuck stole those? You see, everything that I owned, even in my duffel bags, was one of a kind. My Netsuke from Japan went, went missing, and that's one of the happy dots. And a little Buddha that I carried for my faith was also went missing. But all my metaphysical necklaces are gone, ten of them in all. My hats that belonged to my son that I was given by him, gone. A Harley Davidson hat that I bought in Ohio, gone. And openly my belt buckles that came from my father and other gifts from people to me out of love, gone. A marvelous dragon belt, a marvelous world peace belt, a marvelous eagle belt buckle, gone. My rights, gone. My rings for my manhood, gone. My Celtic cross, gone. My dragon rings, gone. My wedding ring with angelic writing on the outside and the translation on the inside, gone. And openly, nobody had the right to do that. So when you think I don't like police, I've got plenty of reasons why I hate them. They ripped out my ACL repair that my father paid for. And they did it multiple times in different states and different cities. And there's pretty much proof of that. But do internal affairs ever care about that? No, because their attitude is a man is what his naked body is, or a man is not a man unless he passes their test of being big and macho. And the little runts of litters are not allowed to be the runts of litters in America anymore today. Unless, of course, they're dogs and part of Los Lobos, which was one of the favorite television shows I watched every day. And my marvelous little cell, which sometimes they forgot to feed me in. Isn't that great? That we get put in these cells and we get forgotten to be fed? And yet, previously, when I stayed for a month, in a medical unit, a older gentleman who had plenty of money and lots of cars on his property and a black man always gave me his extra food in just in case I was so hungry because pretty much you starve there and their version of nutrition is bullshit. But hey, what happens to all that marvelous dollars that they make, right? And what we're doing is paying the worst people to care for our inmates and the worst people to care for people in, the, in hospitals. So forgive me if I hate both processes are both industries but as so far if you want me to like your industry then by far your overall organization across the board and across the land ought to be working appropriately with professionalism love and care in america we have the right to express our opinion it is a part of our rights underneath the constitution at the same time we have the right to freedom of assembly but people like to isolate people like you and people like me who are different or who have gifts of the Lord because they don't want other people to learn how to access the spirit world because some people just don't know how to do that. And that's a shame for them because it provides all kinds of magic and it provides all kinds of help and shopping. It helps provide you all kinds of abilities to lose weight because you will listen to God about what you should and shouldn't eat for your cellular health, which the Lord above knows better than any doctor. But let me tell you, the assholes of the world always want to be over in charge of you, your dick, and your girl, when they already have a wife and kids. So let's get these religious assholes out of the federal government, would be my opinion. But your opinion might be, no, we need them so that they can govern American citizens. And the answer is no. Their job there is to serve our needs, serve the entire American society, and openly put perpetrators of federally inappropriate crimes and hate in jail. Sadly, many of them are them. So that makes it kind of hard to protect yourself from people who like to abuse people like me and people like you and ruin families completely. Taking a loving, caring, generous, kind family and obliterating them to the point that when the elderly parents are basically dying, that they start vying for position and 
civil rivalry all for an estate. How rude, how immoral, and how sick before the house of God. In America, we have the right to speak the truth. And the truth is, if I told you how much is the truth, you would not believe me. If I truly told you the volume of abuse that I've been through from law enforcement following me across six state lines when I was traveling, when I still had my vehicle before they ruined it, you wouldn't believe me. So the bottom line is they have their own little force network that they like to utilize outside the lines of the law. And at some point, somebody lied in some system that made me some sort of person of interest when I'm no person of interest at all. And yet there are people, regular people in a community that will walk up to you and piss all over you think you have the right to give you $10, $20, and then come up at night and sexually assault you and abuse you and steal your property rights. And that's just not right. We have immoral people in America who have all lost their concept of God. They make themselves God, and they make themselves slave masters to other people. And that is not only immoral, it is illegal.